Hi, I'm Jane from Poppy Patchwork. In today's video, I'm going to show you one of the projects that I've been working on. It's an English paper piecing project called Patchwork of the Crosses. I've been working on it for about eight to ten years, so it's not one of the speedy projects that I'm doing. But maybe I'll get it finished this year. Let me show you one of the blocks that I'm working on. So this is one of the um, blocks that I've been working on. You can see I've used three fabrics in this block. I've used the red fabric, the blue fabric and then the floral fabric. This is the main feature fabric that I'm using. So I just focus in a little bit closer. You can see I've got this florally design from the fabric and also this more striped design. So this has all come from the same feature fabric that I'm using, but I fussy cut these out. And what you can get is a really nice kaleidoscope effect. So once I've done um, this, you then have to add a bit of a border to your block. So let me show you that. So this is another block that I've worked on. This time I've used four different fabrics, blue, yellow, red, and then that feature fabric again. And this time I fussy cut a different section of the fabric out. And I've added in a green border that's going to go round the block in its entirety. So this is another block that I've been working on. Um, again, I've used four different fabrics, the red, the yellow and the blue in different combinations this time and that feature fabric. And on this block, I've gone all the way round with the green honeycomb pieces and then I've also added in some little one inch squares in another fabric. And then once those are joined, uh, finished, then I'll join them to another patchwork of the crosses block. And I'm going to hopefully end up with four joined together. What I'll do next is I'll show you what equipment you're going to need to do English paper piecing. And I'll show you how I make the patchwork of the crosses. Before I start to show you all the bits and pieces of equipment that I use, for my English paper piecing, I thought I'd just show you my cute little box that I keep everything in. This little box I got on one of my holidays to France and I couldn't resist reusing it for all my bits and pieces. So let me show you what I've got inside the box. So this is the equipment that I've got in my box. I've got um, paper, card for the um, paper piecing and the templates that go with them. I've got my needles and I use Milner's needles for these. I've got a glue stick, a pencil, the various threads that I use for the project, a pair of scissors, a small pair of scissors, a pair of snips and a larger pair of scissors and also some um, covered paper pieces. So for Patchwork of the Crosses, um, what I use is the one inch honeycomb template, the uh, one inch square template and the two inch square templates. Um, most of the um, fabric is going to be in the honeycomb shape. I also use the um, card, the paper actually provided um, by the company. The company I use is called Paper Pieces. I'll put the link in the description. I always use the pre-cut paper that um, they provide um, because it's just going to be far, far more accurate than anything I could cut out. So you can see with the plastic templates or the acrylic templates 
that um, they are obviously bigger than the paper because that's what you cut your fabric out. Uh, they've got a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Again, I find that easier to use than just a quarter inch seam allowance. And there is a, um, within the template piece, you can see the outline of the template. And that um, is particularly useful for fussy cutting. So you can line up your fabric within those lines. And that is what will be um, your paper piece. So I use glue uh, rather than um, tacking the pieces on. I know some people will tack the pieces on, some people may paper clip the pieces on uh, the fabric to the paper, but I use glue. Um, I use Soline glue, um, but I'm sure there are other brands of glue that you can use. Um, I've also got my a pencil, so uh, once I have um, chosen the fabric that I'm going to use, I draw around the um, acrylic template with the pencil and then use the slightly bigger scissors to cut that out. I also put in all the threads that I'm going to use that I've colour matched to my fabrics. They're in my um, little box so I don't ever have to go hunting for the right thread. I've also got a pair of snips and a small pair of embroidery uh, scissors. And then the needles that I use are milliner's needles or straws. Um, you can see I've got John James needles here. I do use whatever milliner's needles I can find. Um, and I've used those because the eye of the needle is no bigger, I believe, than the point of the needle. And so that means when you're doing your sewing, you don't kind of create a bigger hole as you pull the needle through your fabrics. So those, that, so all of that on my, is my equipment for English paper piecing. So let me demonstrate what I do to cut out the fabric. So with this piece of fabric um, I can see the design that's going to appear on the paper piece. And once I'm happy that that's exactly the design I want to see, on that paper piece, I just simply draw around the acrylic template with my pencil. Now once I've done that, I grab my scissors and I cut that out. So once I've cut the piece out, I then lay it um, wrong side up or right side down and I place the um, paper piece in the centre of um, my cut out piece of fabric and I take the glue stick and I just go along one segment of the glue stick, actually I might do two on this occasion, and then I fold the fabric down, press it with my fingers to seal it. Now I'm going to go back over, I'm going to start on the fabric now with the glue down the next side and then we're going to finger press that on to connect the glue with the fabric and just turn it around a little bit and do the next side I'm just going to keep going round all six sides, gluing the fabric to the piece, like so. And some people are worried that actually the glue doesn't last long enough. Um, and I can assure you, I've been doing, um, I've got some pieces that I glued eight years ago and they're still holding. But also, when I come to remove the papers, they remove very easily. So I actually think gluing is a really good way 
of getting the fabric onto your paper template. So to sew the two pieces together, you lay them right sides together and I've just put a normal knot in the end of my um, thread and it's single thread and what I do is I take um, my needle in at one of the corners through the first piece and then through the second piece like this and then I go back over in the same place to secure the start of my stitching. And then I work my way down the first edge. So um, I'm taking um, a little bit of thread from the first piece and pushing it through to the second piece. And um, you're taking the thread only, no paper. Now when I first started to do this process I used a magnifying glass as well and I would try to get as little of the fabric as possible um, so that um, you couldn't see my stitching but um, that wasn't a really good way of doing it at all because it made the um, it was a very very weak way of sewing it together because I was taking so little fabric it was just a very weak seam so now I take um, you know quite a, a fair amount of the um, fabric as I sew them together and that creates a much stronger seam and so long as you use thread that is um, a good colour match you really don't see the, um, the thread showing through at all. Where you've got um, two different um, coloured fabrics, I do tend to use the lighter thread, the lighter coloured fabric, and use thread to match that. Um, but that's just own, your own choice as to what um, colour threads you want to use. The most important thing when you're coming to sew your pieces together is that you only do one edge at a time. So I'm going to sew along this edge and when I get to the end I'm going to tie it off um, before I go around and the corner and do the next um, piece. It's re this, it just strengthens those corners if you tie a knot in them every time. If you, um, if you don't do that, you're just going to end up with a really weak join. So I'm just uh, sewing along here. It takes a little bit of time. And I'll um, come back to you at the end. So I'm coming to the end. And only a couple more stitches till I get to this point at the end. So there, I've reached the end of the first edge and I'm just going to go over that again in the same position and this time I'm just going to feed my needle through the thread loop of the thread to get a knot and I'm going to do that one more time so now I've got a knot at both um, ends of that edge of um, the honeycomb piece. I'm going to just cut that thread off there and I'll open this out so that you can see the stitching. Well hopefully you won't see the stitching at all. So that's how I sew the two honeycomb pieces together. So on this particular block um, this green and this um, yellow piece need to be sewn together. So, a little bit more tricky than when you've just got two hexagons that need to go together, but you manoeuvre it around so that the two edges are lined up. Sometimes this means you have to 
fold paper pieces that are um, that have not been removed. So there, I've got that lined up now. So I'm going to grab my needle and I'm going to start at this corner. Just do a double stitch there to secure it at the corner. And then as I showed you before, I'm just going to sew from here to this corner here and finish it off. As I said before, English paper piecing does take a long time for me and I've been make, doing this project for about 8 to 10 years. But I do find it really enjoyable and really relaxing. It's something that I take on holiday with me. It's very portable and it's something I enjoy doing whilst I'm on holiday. Let me show you what I've done so far. So I previously showed you the two smaller blocks that I've been working on, but I have got two other blocks which I've done the whole borders for and that I've joined together. So I guess I'm halfway there. Let's hope it doesn't take me another eight to 10 years to finish it. One thing I do need to say before I finish this video is that the paper pieces need to be left in the um, patchwork until you've gone round all sides of the paper piece. So if I flip this over, you can see here that I've removed the paper pieces from quite a lot of these honeycombs. But I've left the paper pieces in place around the edges. You don't want to remove the paper pieces until you've gone round all six edges. But it does make sense to remove the ones from inside the um, patchwork. You can of course reuse the paper pieces, but also it does make it easier to sew as the, as the patchwork becomes bigger. So I'd just like to say thank you for watching this video. And I must say I'm really inspired by those people who can keep on task and finish the Patchwork of the Crosses or the Hexagon Quilts or any EPP project much quicker than myself. I'm hoping to get this finished and when I do I'll do another video so you can see the completed project. Hopefully you've been inspired to do some of your own English paper piecing. And if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you're made aware of all new videos. Take care and keep quilting. Bye for now.